Hi guys, welcome to this introductory course to using CAS XPS to process XPS data. I'm Mark Isaacs and I'm from University College London and Harwell XPS. That's the UK's national facility for XPS analysis. We're a joint venture between UCL, Cardiff University and the University of Manchester and we're based at the research complex at Harwell near Oxford. We provide state-of-the-art equipment to researchers in academia and in industry as well as providing training and advice for the community as a whole. If you haven't already found it, check out our YouTube page where you'll find some videos on some more advanced techniques in using CAS or XPS, as well as some videos on the theory and fundamentals about XPS analysis. Also, check out our new website, hardwellxps.guru, where you'll find lots of articles about XPS theory, fundamentals and analysis, as well as a forum where you'll be able to find advice from many experts in the field. In this video we're going to be covering all of the basics of using Casper XPS. So those of you, if you are completely new to XPS analysis, don't worry, we are going to be covering everything you need to know here just to get you started. We're going to begin by showing you where you can find the software, how to download and install it, and then move on to some simple data analysis. Some of you might be using data acquired using a Thermo instrument and Avantage. So we're also going to cover how to get data from Avantage format into a format that CASA can open. So let's begin. Okay, so head to casaxps.com where you will find a download link for the latest version. Here you can see we've got 2.3.23 ready to download. So if you give that a click, you will get a zip file downloading and if you want to just open that up and find the application program here, the uh, .exe. For the next step, you are going to need a site license. So have a chat with your IT team, find what that is. If you don't have one, uh, don't worry, you can still follow along in demo mode. You just won't be able to export any of the data at the end of it. So now that we've downloaded CASA, we just need to stick in our site license. So if you open up the software, head on over to help and about CASA XPS, you can stick in your details here, the username and license, and then just click update license, uh, and then you're all set. So I mentioned that we were going to be converting some data from Avantage format into CASA format. What you will have when you get your Avantage data are data space files such as these. So what I need you to do is to create a folder where you're going to have your raw AVG data and then if you just create another folder called CASA files this is going to be where we put our new files that we convert so if you head into program files and find thermo and avantage and in bin there is a program called dataspace batch dump now if you using a computer which is connected to an instrument hopefully this will be on the desktop and you can just convert then and there but if not you will find that in in this address here so if you open that up then we're just going to find the raw data that we put into a folder here and just select the whole folder and click ok and then we need to select an output folder so this CASA files folder that I created I'm just going to use that as the output folder click OK and OK again uh, and that's all done. So now that we've converted our Avantage data space files into a .avg format we just need to do the last conversion so if you head into the CASA software and go to file and instead of open we're going to use this convert option. So if you then find the root folder of the output folder so this CASA files one and then we're just going to create a new file here called dataset1, call it what you like, but I'm going to use that. And it's important that you use the extension .mvg. Now this is going to import all of the samples here. Uh, we've only got one here, but uh, it will import every single folder and title the data based on the folder name. So if we open this up, we've got one sample and it's called sample1 because that was what our folder was called and all of our data is there and OK. OK, so if you've been using this method, you should now have all of your files on the right-hand side. If you've used another instrument or you have 
files from a different source and you'd prefer to have them all in the same place I tend to like working with all of my data sets in a single file we're just going to go through one of the ways that you can combine everything into a single file now and add some data so if you go to file we're going to go down to open and merge now using this option we can find some of our extra files so we've got a couple of different files here and then just drag a box or use shift and select all of the files you wish to open and merge and then click open transfer the existing row labels uh, because again that's going to dictate what appears here on the on the sample name and we're going to want those to say what sample they are okay so the final little bit of file management we're going to go through is if we just make this a bit smaller so we've now got two windows of data um, but it'd be nice if we could have them both in the same place so there is one more way that we can move data sets around if you click on the row name here it will select all of the blocks associated with that sample and we're going to use CASA's copy paste function now this doesn't work brilliantly so I don't recommend it for everything but it can be quite useful at just moving a single data set across from one sheet to another so with these selected if we come up here we will find this option to copy and paste VAMAS blocks so if you give that a click and then click OK it'll make a duplicate copy here and then we can come back to this worksheet where we have all of our data sets together and then click on copy paste again and hopefully yep, so we now see that our new sample is down here and we have all of our data sets in a single file now this is really useful because we can do things like compare data so let's look at all the carbons we can overlay data sets and compare them so now we've got all of our data in a single file we'll just go through some of the ways that you can visualize that data and contrast and compare samples these column headers up here you can click on any of these and it will select all of the VAMAS blocks associated this so if we've got silicon 2p we can click there for the carbon we can click here the same applies to the the samples themselves so if you click on the name of the sample here it will select all of the blocks associated with that so if we have a quick look at the silicon first what i'm going to do is overlay all of the silicon peaks so that we can compare and see how they uh, how they differ from sample to sample over here we've got an option called overlay or you can use f2 and that will overlay all of the samples as a in a, in a single uh, window so one of the ways we can then treat that is to use this normalize function uh, if you click it once it will normalize to the baseline and if you click it again it will normalize based on the minima and the maxima of the peak so we can see here because we've got one sample which doesn't have any silicon in it it's normalized to the minimum of the noise and the maximum of the noise here so uh, very useful for comparing those samples which do have silicon in so if we just highlight the ones with silicon in and plot those can see that overlays very nicely so the silicon in all the samples is uh, is the same and there's no deviation in line shape or or width or anything so uh, we can be happy with that if we then overlay all of the elements from a single sample you can see here we've got our wide scan and then the different colors of the different elements that we have for our high resolution scans here we just remove the wide scan a second and overlay them again there's another option up here called tile by row so if you click on that and then click order by energy we can then have all of our spectra from a single sample in one easy to manage um, column here and we can just scroll up and down and compare and it saves having to individually open blocks so there's one last little step that we need to do before we really get into processing and that is to load up the library file so if you come over here to library or f10 and go along to input file 
there's an option down here called browse library directory now if you're using data from a thermo instrument then you don't need to worry because this version of the software will load up the thermo values automatically um, that the thermo used the Schofield values but if you are using another instrument then just check with the experimentalist what library you need to use for example here if you're using a Kratos instrument then there's a specific library for Kratos here uh, and we can load that up by select and then clicking load. I'm not going to do that because uh, this data here is from a thermo instrument so we're going to keep the original library but just check that you've got the right library loaded for your data. One thing we do need to touch on is calibration. So in XPS when you remove photo electrons with the x-rays you can build up a positive charge on the surface due to all of the electrons being removed. If the material that you're analyzing is non-conducting then you're going to have a lot of charge build up which doesn't dissipate and you're going to need to compensate for that. So experimentally we use electron flood guns, we fire at the surface to neutralize that positive charge and give us nice symmetric peaks. The problem with this is by firing electrons at the surface you can alter the binding energy of the resultant spectra which means you then need to correct for that after you've recorded. We would typically use carbon to do this for a lot of samples because you find carbon on the surface of everything. It's not a perfect system, there's many flaws with doing it this way, um, but it is one of the more reproducible ways of calibrating. So I'm just going to quickly go through how to calibrate now. I would recommend watching one of our videos on some of the different types of calibration on our YouTube page, uh, but this is just a very brief introduction on how to do it. Up here we have a tool called processing, so if you open that and go to the second tab here, this calibration. So this is going to open a box with some options here and uh, if we click on the spectrum here you can see this measured value is changing, it changes depending on what we click on. Now for a sample such as this I would look to calibrate based on the lowest energy carbon peak which will be our CCCH bonds. So if we click on the peak maximum here, change this to 284.8, we can then click on this name to highlight all of the associated blocks with this sample and then use apply to selection to apply this calibration factor to all of the element blocks here. I'm not going to do it because I've already calibrated this one and you can see it's almost exactly 284.8 already. So again for a more detailed discussion on calibration check out one of our other YouTube uh, videos but uh, for now that is how you do it. One of the first things that we can do to process this data is to look at the wide scans. So we'll take this one as an example. If you go to the library option or press F10, you'll find a couple of options down here and some tools. Uh, one of those is called Find Peaks. So if you click on that, the software will try and automatically determine which elements you have present based on the peaks it can detect in your spectrum. This doesn't always work perfectly so it's definitely worth just double checking and going through with a bit of knowledge of your samples to make sure it's not giving you any false positives. In this case it seems as if everything we expect to be there is there and we've not got any undue surprises. Uh, but if there is anything you want to remove or add you can go to the periodic table tab and click on an element and it will show you where photo emission peaks come for that element and what intensity ratios you will find for each of those peaks. But if we're happy with what we've got we can then do some very simple quantification. So I'm just going to click back on element table and click on create regions and then turn off the elements on periodic table. So 
we've now got a quantification table based on the wide scan. If we want to move this table around, make it a bit easier to read so it doesn't overlap the peaks, up here we've got something called display parameters and tile, tile annotation is what we want. And we can change the font based on annotation history, select the annotation, click on font, and then I'm just going to reduce that a bit and apply. And now we've got our text box somewhere where it's not overlapping with the Oxygen 1S. So this is very simple, very quick um, quantification just based on the wide scans. Um, it's likely the first thing that you'll do when you get your data just to check that everything is there and sensible and, uh, and begin your, your processing. So the wide scan is, is a scan of all of the energies in your spectrum, but it doesn't use a particularly high energy resolution, otherwise the scans will take a very long time. And that's why we record high resolution scans as well, so that we can get a bit more detail in those spectra and a bit more of a, an accurate picture. So if we have a look at some of these individual spectra now, we're going to open up one of the most important tools in CASA XPS and this option up here, Quantify F7. So the first thing we need to do is to draw analysis regions around the peaks of interest. So we'll start off with our oxygen. We've got a nice clean spectra here. There's almost no noise in this at all uh, because the peak's very intense. So if we click Create, we can then drag the edges of these box around. If we come up here and turn the regions on, we can colour it in so you can see more clearly what it is you're doing. And really you just want to get this coming either side of the peak so that you're integrating the, the entire photo emission. And let's do this for the rest of the samples. So with the nitrogen here, we can see we've got slightly noisier data, the peak's a bit smaller, so the signal to noise isn't quite as good. So there's an option here called average width. So if we change this to three or even five, what this is then doing is taking the energy position as a an average of five points, so two either side of the center, and it makes it a little bit easier to get that baseline going through the noise of the data. You really want it so that this background line is, is coming through the middle of the, the noise here. That looks pretty good. So moving on, we'll do the same for our carbon. And just a quick point on background type. You can change this. There's two very common background types, linear and Shirley. If you just type S, if that says anything other than Shirley, just type S and enter. And uh, that will give you this Shirley background type, which is just a little bit better than the linear version. And then our last peak. Right, so now we've got regions drawn around all of our elements. If we select the VAMAS blocks of the elements we've just put regions in, come back up to our tile annotation and then click on quantification and then there's a few options down here so for example I don't really want to include the area or the line shape let's apply that so now we've got some atomic percentages based on these high resolution spectra that we have Okay, so finally, if we go back to our quantification window. So we've done a bit of quantification based on regions. There's one last little thing we're going to go through, and that is splitting these peaks up into their individual states. So this components tab allows us to create individual profiles for different species that might be present. So for example here, can I type CCCH? And so this is quite high. So this is probably some form of carbonyl. 
that's going to leave those as that for now. But you can create uh, individual components to quantify the different amounts of each functional group in your sample. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. I'd recommend you check out some of the deconvolution and line fitting videos on our YouTube page for a bit more information about those. And finally, we're just going to cover how to export the data that you've got so far. So first off, the quantification. If we select all of the blocks that we've processed and in our quantification window, go to report spec. We can then get a standard report here of our region. And then we have this as a table and this option up here, copy. We can copy that to clipboard or save it as a text file. And finally, if you want to export the actual spectra itself, there's an option up here called Save Tab ASCII to Clipboard. If you open that up, you can just copy that or save that as a text file. And then you can put that into Excel so that you can plot those for your publications or reports. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. And don't forget, you can check out our YouTube channel, Harwell XPS, where you'll find lots more videos about XPS. If you'd like to know more information about the facility Harwell XPS, you can find us at harwellxps.uk. Also, remember harwellxps.guru, where you'll find lots of articles about XPS, as well as a forum discussion where you can seek advice. Thanks for watching and stay safe.